Hey folks, um, I'm Declan Doherty, as John said there. I work with Intel in Shannon in Ireland. And I'm just going to give a, an update on the work, ongoing work on the DPK IPsec library, so, which uh, Constantine, one of my colleagues, is leading in the team in Shannon. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm just going to give a little bit of an overview. In this, if you were at the summit, uh, sorry, the user space event in October, it's a similar uh, content, just to give a little bit of background on why we're doing it. And then I'm going to just talk a little bit about the changes that have happened in the community over the, it, with the, the, the ongoing development and some of the changes in the API levels. Um, so it, why we're doing the IPsec libraries, essentially to create a, a high performance library for IPsec data plane processing to, uh, to extend the functionality in DPDK. Uh, the, the, the IPsec is a, is a core technology that's becoming more and more prevalent in data plane applications and having a really good solution in DPDK I think is an is a important uh, element of the, of, the, of the toolkit that is DPDK, especially as um, it's, IPsec is becoming in more and more ways accelerated and the, the likelihood of longer term it may move into the smart NICs as well. So having a complete solution in DPDK, I think, is, is an important, uh, important for the project. So in terms of what we're doing, we, we're trying to develop a, a, a modular library that, so has the, the core functionality is going to run the data plane enablement so, and the SA management, and then have the availability of some <coughs> further optional modules that implement the security association and security policy databases that can be used on a hard, ad hoc basis depending on the, uh, the integration model that someone's choosing, and then also looking at doing, um, creating a shim layer to allow integration point for existing Ike clients. So if you are using all of the elements of the, that eventually end up in the library, that you can hook it, it, it up to um, you, uh, an Ike daemon of, of, of your choice. Um, and then I think one of the key things that we're trying to do it within the, with the library itself is the enablement of uh, the hardware acceleration and making that a first class uh, use case in the library. So trying to comprehend uh, the look aside accelerators and, and, and the inline acceleration model uh, and doing that from day one. Um, so in terms of the components just that I was talking about, like the current focus is purely of, of the library and what we're hoping to upstream in 1902 is on the data path and the SA management. So creating of your security associations and then the actual data path processing, and the packet encapsulations and uh, the, the fu functions around encryption, decryption. Uh, and then those other modules uh, um, that we will hope to, as, as time goes on over the next quarter number of uh, releases, add the functionality. So a high performance scalable SA database uh, and security policy database and hopefully we'll be able to do that using some of the existing libraries in DPDK like our uh, hash, hash tables and um, ACL tables. And one of the other aspects we're, we're also looking at is, is so a module for helping to control and, and use uh, the, the actual crypto um, the, the crypto uh, f facilities you have on the, on the device. So do you have look aside accelerators? Do you have an inline crypto accelerator? Do, are those resources constrained and, and helping maybe to prioritize on some qual quality of service components? Um, so the, the data path part of the library, it, it, it's very much just orientated around the, 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 an essay uh, the definition of your SA, and then it's it's a it's a burst uh, burst API base. So very similar to existing DPDK libraries, we're we're looking at batching up packets from the same SA, and then by handling those all in one go, we're get, getting uh, cycle cost savings. Um, so the, the low level APIs that we're developing currently are, are handling the protocol processing part only. So Take, they, they take the input packets and they will, the first stage is like a pre-crypto processing stage. It will give you the crypto ops that you can then enqueue in the, in any, in the form you want to your chosen crypto processor as a CPU based or look aside accelerator. And then the post crypto processing is taking again a crypto ops associated with one tunnel and uh, doing the post processing after the crypto. 
And then we hope to, once we've achieved that uh, and uh, shown the functionality to look at enabling a, a higher level API that's going to abstract all of the, the crypto processing model away from the user. So you can just, this is my, these are my packets for this essay and they get processed on a particular core. Um, and as I mentioned there, the, the, the key, one of the key things is that we, we want the data path module part of the library for doing the packet processing to be independent of the database implementations. So if you were to integrate with a, an existing project that if there was, there was classification tables, so, so you could use um, existing, uh, existing tables in an in a application for your implementing your security policy, tables at le database at least. So in terms of what we're focusing within Intel uh, 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 for the kind of processing the key, the, 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 the key most costly processing part of, of uh, IP, IPsec is the crypto uh, overhead. So we're focusing on, on three, the CPU-based processing, uh, crypto processing, the uh, look aside model, so to hardware accelerator, and uh, to, uh, to look at the new inline-based inline models where the crypto processing is happening on ingress and egress through the physical device. Um, in terms of feature sets for the 1902 release, we're, we're looking at enabling tunnel transport ESP. Um, focuses on IPv4 implementations, but the, the IPv6 will probably more than likely be mostly there. Um, it, focusing on just the, the kind of the, the standard or the, the, or the base functionality in terms of uh, the, the crypto uh, and uh, sorry, the cipher and authentication algorithms, AES, CBC, a HMAC SHA-1 and a ASGCM. Now, we, they, they, we, we'll probably uh, actually will have support for all of the different key sizes up to 256 and 192 uh, AES uh, for both CBC and SHA-1, sorry, CBC and GCM. And uh, we probably see we'll able to also support m uh, all of the SHA-1 and SHA-2, but our focus in terms of testing and implementation is on those algorithms. And then as I mentioned, in terms of crypto process, the crypto processing, we're focusing on the enablement through or, or the crypto dev APIs for your look aside and, and CPU based crypto processing and the RT security on the IXGB device for the inline crypto for IPsec. Um, and we also will have the extended sequence number and anti replay implementations uh, with uh, the multi, multi threaded. Uh, capabilities in terms of uh, the sequence, sequence number and window handling. Um, then, uh, so in terms of the security policy and security, uh, associa security association databases, we, we want to develop um, some standard APIs that will allow some flexibility in what can be implemented under that, on, on, underneath that. So IPsec has quite, um, a, a very large range of deployment models for the particular use case. Some, some models have a very small number of security associations with very high throughput tunnels. And then you, you can go to the completely other range where you've got a lot of very low throughput tunnels, but into the millions or tens of millions of SAs. And depending on the deployment on the system, the, the best fit for the implementation of the database may change. So, our intentions to kind of have a, a, pluggable, uh, mod, a pluggable model for the database implementations that we can come up with the best, you can use the best uh, implementation to fit your use case. Um, again, I, I've talked a little bit already about the crypto load balancing. So the, the, the idea basically is allowing some QoS parameters to be provided with the SA when you're doing the creation. Uh, and then for this module to, to be able to look at the resources that you've assigned to the IPsec library and make the, a, a decision to, to, so to take some of the complexity out of that for, for the user. So for example, if you had a, a very high throughput but uh, low, uh, high latency uh, SA, maybe the, a look aside accelerator is the best case. If you have high throughput, uh, low latency requirements, then of inline crypto is available, then you would direct it to there. Uh, and especially in terms of in, inline acceleration, the, those devices are usually very constrained in terms of the number of tunnels they can support. And, and then one of the other things we want to be able to support within the library is 
uh, migration of one from one processing model to another dynamically. So can can you move from CPU-based crypto processing to a, a look aside or, or, or inline, depending on the oversubscriptions of the particular accelerators? And the last element of the library that we're we're looking at developing is, as I mentioned, is the Ike. So we want to develop at least initially. Um, to, to add the functionality into the IPsec security gateway sample application to allow integration with an external IC, uh, daemon, uh, which so it will be able to update the SA databases um, f with the negotiated key material. So in terms of what the APIs are starting to look like, and the, this has changed a little bit um, since uh, user space from feedback in the community, you've got, we've got the standard uh, SA in it and, and um, destroy the, the, the Fini function. Uh, the, just, just an example of what the, the parameter, input parameters when you're creating a tunnel looks like. That, that hasn't really changed very much. We've added a, an SI type function just to allow you to, do, to, to look at, up uh, and map SIs after they're created to, uh, to see just the material. What is it an ESP uh, tunnel mode or, or et cetera. Um, there's, so we've there's, since user space there's uh, the, the we've introduced the idea of a session, and multiple sessions can be uh, associated with a single SA, and this is just to handle the um, the, the the actual kind of crypto accelerator device type uh, that's been used with to do the processing of that uh, SA. Um, then we have our, our main first main data path function, which is the crypto prepare. So this is taking the IPsec session, which has a security association with it, that your input embuffs and will give you a corresponding crypto op, ops outputs for processing. And depending on its ingress or egress um, essay, it will have done different processing in terms of the, the functionality on an ingress uh, 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 SA, you'd have done at least the initial anti-replay checks. Um, there also this is a helper function that we've added. Uh, so after, you may be sending a number of security associations to the same crypto accelerator. So they may come back and mixed and the, the crypto group function is allow you to disaggregate uh, a number of SAs into the, uh, into the, to batch them up into the same SA type, which is then used in the, the, the IPsec uh, packet process function, which is the one that was called after crypto processing. So again, this is designed to take a, 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 an array of buffers all associated with the same crypto tunnel, or sorry, security association tunnel. So the, the pipeline, application pipeline looks a little bit like this. Uh, it's, you're taking an, an input packet burst, you do, you're gonna do your SA uh, lookup for, the, for those packets you're gonna uh, group your packets by SA type. Do then a uh, IPsec crypto prepare on, on all of the packets for a particular SA, enqueue to your crypto device, then dequeue from the crypto device where the crypto processing is happening. If you're doing an inline model, you would just, in these, the crypto enqueue and crypto dequeue would get replaced by just a set packet metadata. Then you've got your IPsec packet group stage to disaggregate if there's a mixture of SAs on the output stage of the crypto device, and, and then your, your IPsec packet process. And then you have fully processed uh, packets on the output. Um, so in terms of the work being done, up, done upstream, in 1902, we're planning to uh, implement the security gate, extend security gateway application to, to use uh, the new library. But what we're going to do is introduce it in parallel with the existing pipeline, especially to allow people to collaborate if they've got accelerators implemented uh, and they need to make changes to the library to support their model of uh, processing, so it, you'll just have a, a new option on the sample gateway application to select the, the new code path based on the library. And then, so in terms of roadmap and, and ongoing work, these are links to the, the patches that Constantine has sent up to the mailing list, so you've got the IPsec library patch sets, and then the changes to the security gateway, so really love for everyone who's interested to have a look and give feedback in the mailing list and help collaborate. And then in terms of going forward, the, kind of the, the next, <coughs> um, next stage uh, uh, enabling 
we're looking at, at 1905 uh, on going forward is AH, tunnel transport mode, full IPv6 tested support, uh, fully migrating the security gateway application to use the library. And then we want to start looking at some of the more interesting uh, problems uh, of scaling the data path um, for multi-core processing. How do we scale for the fat, uh, the, the fat flow essay? So get, getting a single tunnel to scale, to scale the processing across multiple cores. Um, and we, as part of that, we were interested in looking maybe deploying a, an event dev based uh, IPsec gateway, which d using that sort of distribution model and that pipeline model for IPsec processing. Um, also the high level data path APIs I mentioned, and then the security association and, and security policy databases. And then eventually onto the uh, Ike daemon. So you can see there's a, there's a lot of work left to do after the initial upstream and we really, if anyone's interested in collaborating, please do get in contact. So that's everything, any questions? Okay, got off easy this time. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much, Declan. Okay, thanks.